Economic puzzles are all around us and I get a lot of questions asking how people can get involved in research. And so I wanted to solve an economic puzzle with you today. And it's a $4 million economic puzzle. And normally I would just go through and do this research on the back end and then tell you the story. But today I want to solve this together. I want to show myself going through this process and I am in fact going to time it. You're gonna have a timer up in the top corner and you're gonna see how long it takes me to go through this puzzle. The puzzle is back in 2010, how in the world did Twilight Eclipse beat Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one? It beat it in the box office by about $4 million and this just, blew me away. I would never have guessed if you had put those two movies up before me, I would have totally gone with Harry Potter winning. Anyway, so I want to solve this puzzle. I'm going to go dive into the data. I'm going to go investigate hypotheses. I'm going to have a little model. And if you like this, if you like going through, let me know in the comments below a puzzle that you want me to investigate. So that way we could do this together. Anyway, Let's go on to the puzzle. Let's jump right into this puzzle. I've got the page for Box Office Mojo open right here. And what you can see in 2010, Harry Potter came out. Harry Potter was the number seven movie that year and it made $295 million. Two spots up from that, we have Twilight Saga Eclipse making over $300 million. I cannot believe Twilight beat this. And so what I want to do is before I even get started, let me give you my prediction. What I think is the cause of this, I'm actually not even going to tell you right out. I am going to put it on this sticky note as my prediction. And then I'm going to put it right there. That tiny little sticky note right there. That is my prediction of why Harry Potter did not make as much as Twilight did. So we're going to turn to that and see if I was right. But I want to get into a model of what box office revenues are so that way I can just start my thinking. So I can think about where I need to go when I'm doing this research. And I'm just going to be really simple model. It's going to be your revenue equals your price times your quantity, right? And you say like, this is just definitional. It's not a model yet. And true, it's not a model, but this already reveals something to us. Think about price when we're thinking about movie tickets. Movie tickets are the same price across movies. It, they don't change it. If I go to the movie theater and Harry Potter and Twilight are playing at the same place, I'm gonna pay the same price no matter which movie I see. So we actually can rule out that it's a price thing. It's not that Twilight had higher ticket prices than Harry Potter. So we're gonna be able to rule out the price. The issue here is quantity. And quantity is gonna be a product of supply and demand. So we need some way to understand supply and demand determining that quantity here. And what we can actually say is that revenue is equal to the number of theaters, let's do number T, times the average revenue per theater. And this, I'm sorry, this is all getting mixed up right here, but the number of theaters is kind of like a supply factor. And the average revenue per theater is kind of like demand. I say kind of, I'm not gonna dive into it right now, maybe I'll dive into it later, or you can tell me in the comments why I can't just take this as supply. So what we can see right here, actually, we can start calculating just from these numbers uh, what the average revenue was um, and the number of theaters. So let's go ahead, let's open up that Excel workbook and let's just put that in. Before even doing any calculations, one thing that immediately pops out to me is that Twilight had more theaters than Harry Potter and it had more revenue. So maybe we're looking at a supply issue. Let's go ahead, we only have one of those variables here. We only have the number of theaters. Let's calculate the average revenue per theater. What do these numbers tell us? Well, they tell us that maybe the demand factors were a little bit higher for Harry Potter. Harry Potter had a higher average revenue per theater than Twilight did, but Twilight had more theaters. But that's not quite I don't think that's actually what's gonna be the end explanation. We haven't solved the puzzle yet. What's wrong with this? This number for theaters is the number of theaters that there were at the most point of time. The number of theaters changes over time. 
it doesn't have 4,000 theaters the whole time. So one thing that we could look at is opening weekend. That will give us a good idea of the expected demand because we're gonna see the supply the first weekend it was out and we're gonna see demand the first weekend it was out. And let's see if we're gonna get similar numbers here where we get how much people want to see this. Let, let's just go find those numbers. So one of the nice things about these weekly calculations is they actually calculate the average theater revenue in here. So I didn't even have to go through and calculate it. So I've grabbed the revenue figures and apparently Twilight came out on 4th of July weekend. You know, I was really involved at the time and following that kind of stuff. So of course I knew that, but <laughs> I did not. I decided to grab the three day weekend, which is gonna be Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday for both because I didn't want to worry about the bias from the long weekend. That, that was a personal choice. I think it doesn't make too big of a difference because what's crazy here is how the mystery develops. What you can see is that the number of theaters were about the same. Again, Twilight had more. This opening weekend was that weekend where they had the most theaters open. But revenues for Harry Potter were twice as large as they were at, in Twilight. And that was translated basically one for one into the average revenue. Average, average revenue per theater in Harry Potter was about $30,000 and Twilight was $14,000. So this is deepening the mystery for me. Why did Harry Potter start off twice as much as Twilight, but it lost in the end? I think we're gonna have to go even deeper into the week by week. We're gonna have to see how this evolves over the time that Harry Potter is in theaters and Twilight's in theaters, and we're gonna have to see what moment they cross. Why is it that Twilight eventually gains on Harry Potter? And fortunately, we can probably do that pretty easily by just doing a copy and paste and analyzing it. So let's, let's go back and dive into this data. One of the things I noticed as I was going through grabbing this data is that the number of weeks that the movies were in theaters is very different. So Twilight was in theaters for 16 weeks and Harry Potter was in theaters for 21 weeks. Harry Potter had a whole month more than Twilight and still wasn't able to edge it out in the box office. Again, it just feels like all of these things are layering on top of each other, providing more and more of a puzzle. We still have not ruled out the sticky note. I think that this is gonna be the answer. But what I wanna do now is plot out the weekend revenue, like the total to date revenues. And I wanna see at what week that, Harry, that Twilight passed Harry Potter. All right, really interesting thing that I found here. I think I was misunderstanding the July 4th release of Twilight. I was joking about that earlier, but it turns out it was really important. July 4th pushed the release to a Wednesday release, it looked like. If I bring it back over here, it looks like Twilight was released on a Wednesday, giving it a few days head start before it went out. And so that actually after that first weekend, it had five days of revenue and it had made 157, whereas Harry Potter in those three days had made 125. So what it looks like, Twilight was actually beating Harry Potter from the beginning, which is wild to me. But one of the things that emerges from this graph is that it looks like Harry Potter was gaining on Twilight. And that gap narrows. You can see that gap narrowing right here in that second week. Harry Potter's got good steam, but then that steam really dies off. Like you see a lot of fewer gains over the next couple weeks, whereas Twilight kept going. Twilight had enough steam to get it up and reach that high revenue, Harry Potter took a long time to even get close to uh, Twilight's final revenue. When did Twilight hit that 295? That's my question. Twilight had hit that in seven weeks, right? Seven weeks, and it took 21 weeks for Harry Potter to hit that number. So a third of the time. I think my sticky note's getting there. Let's look at which week that started dying. Week two looks strong. Week three, we're seeing that gap. Week four for sure. So I'm gonna say week three or week four is what we're looking at. What movie knocks Harry Potter off? That's my question. Ah, uh, okay, so week four, we're seeing Chronicles of Narnia come out. 
which is convenient. Uh, it looks like Tangled has already beat Harry Potter at this point. So we had two movies and The Tourist. I don't even remember what The Tourist is, but we're seeing some movies start to beat Harry Potter right there at the beginning. Let's go on to the next weekend, week five. We've got Tron ahead of it. We've got Yogi Bear. I forgot that they had made a live action Yogi Bear. We've got Chronicles of Narnia, Fighter, Tangled, Turs, Black Swan. How do you know? Harry Potter is in ninth place here. These movies are pushing Harry Potter down. What? Oh, I think I'm way off on one of my predictions. That's what. Let me, let me show you, let, hold on. Okay, I was way off on my prediction. You can see right here. Let me show you this prediction. This was my prediction, can you see that? It says, Avatar. I thought Harry Potter was coming out around the same time as Avatar. Avatar came out the year before. I was like, oh yeah, Avatar came out around that same time. Avatar must have been competing with it. Totally wrong. Here I had this prediction sitting there the whole time. But the concept behind this is actually true. And my conclusion here is that Harry Potter ended up lower than Twilight because Harry Potter faced way more competition weeks into their movies. So let's go ahead and check that by going to look at what happened at Twilight at week three and week four of its release. Okay, I'm not 100% convinced that I'm right on this because here we are, we have week four, Twilight is at number eight. So there are other movies competing with Twilight. They're, they're taking away and one of them is Inception. Inception did really well. I might be wrong on this competition hypothesis. I thought that it was the competition that was making it struggle but no that doesn't look like it Let, let's go back to the original revenue is equal to number of theaters times average revenue now i want to know what average revenue was like i mean we basically already know what's going to be like but let's go ahead okay. so what we're seeing here is average revenue per theater we're seeing harry potter is off the charts on this one declines really quickly but always stays above Twilight. So now we just gotta look at number of theaters. How, how many theaters were these movies in? Really interesting. So number of theaters is staying, you know, in Harry Potter's favor still. There's there's like one or two times when the when Twilight wins out. Man, but that though that what's getting me here is this graph right here. I think what we're getting is that Twilight had those few extra days and it got like a lot of, like a pretty big opening weekend once you take into account that it started on a Wednesday and went through that weekend. And that was able to carry a lot of momentum through the rest of its run. Let's imagine what Twilight would have looked like if it had Harry Potter's opening weekend. And all we have to do to get that is create, you know, just subtract off that revenue difference at the very beginning. That's gonna be a super easy thing to track. And there it is. That was, <laughs> so, so what we're doing is we're saying, let's take off that extra revenue that Twilight had its opening weekend. It had that banger opening weekend. Let's subtract off that revenue from the entire Twilight run. And let's see what Twilight would have ended up with at the end. And it ends up much lower than Harry Potter. We can see Harry Potter starts, where they're starting the same spot. Harry Potter had much faster growth at that first week, did well. It looks like Twilight kind of narrowed the gap a little after a few and then just kept going. It was just that opening weekend. You had a bunch of thirsty women going out to see Edward and Jacob that first weekend and that carried Twilight. I can't believe that. So there you go, 36 and a half minutes to solve this puzzle. I'm a little embarrassed. I should have solved that way quicker if I had made that connection on the opening weekend. But something that's really interesting here is how valuable those first few days are relative to the last month, right? Twilight had two extra days, that Wednesday and that Thursday, and that was worth more than a whole month that Harry Potter got at the end of its run. That is pretty amazing, and it makes you wonder, why don't they just keep moving up the date so that way they can take advantage of that time when people are really into that movie? Well, it only works a little bit, right? The most you can move it up is a week. 
and you were starting to see that. Like back in the day, you could go to a midnight release and you would go 12.01 Friday morning. Now, when I go see Avengers, I'm seeing it six o'clock Thursday night. Like those releases keep getting moved up because that extra time is so valuable relative to the back end when people are tired and there's other competition out there. So this was fun. I love thinking about that. That insight was something that I thought was actually pretty interesting. So if you have other puzzles that you'd like me to solve, let me know in the comments below. Also make sure you check out these other videos and subscribe, okay? Join us in this community. We'll see you next time.